uh, but remember uh, we'll start with the sky is not the limit it's just the beginning okay and so first of all uh, the question which i get asked a lot is um uh, should should I take up OBG as a branch? There's a lot of apprehension. There's a lot of uh, people feel it's it's a very busy branch. You don't have time. Um, there's a lot of toxicity. Um, all these questions come to me. So just to give you a brief introduction about residency, about how it is to be an obstetrician. Okay, so it's not only delivering babies, which is a very, I think it's a very exciting part. Uh, no other branch uh, gives you the joy that uh, the birth of a baby does. But apart from delivering babies, um, we do a lot of other things. Okay, we do of OTs, we, we are the OPD, uh, we do we're involved in a lot of other things so you can see it's 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 um uh, it's a very interesting field okay and uh, uh just to go about a bit of the pros and cons of this branch okay the advantages and disadvantages because so when i was um an intern and i was deciding what to do or which subject to take i never honestly this was 20 years back and uh, not 20 years back uh this was around uh, uh uh, yeah, around 18 years back. And I I thought um, um, uh, to, uh, I never thought in so much detail as, as students these days ask me. I knew in my heart, I liked OBG, I want to be a gynecologist. I never thought 10 years down the line, what will I be doing? Will I be doing fellowship? Will I be doing super speciality? Will I be having my own setup? What will I do? I never thought it. I just knew in my heart that I loved this subject. I loved it since I first was introduced to the subject in second or third year. I remember my fourth semester in clinics, I was in love with the subject. So I knew in my mind, this is what I wanted to do. And I never thought so much beyond. But now these days, uh, students, most of you are very, very, um, uh, I would say much more advanced than what we were. And you, you look to see everything in detail you want to know 10 years down the line what are you going to be doing is it going to be beneficial how is your work-life balance and it is good it's good to think so much in the future you should know what you want so here are some pros and some cons of the subject okay so the pros are it is a good mix of medicine and surgery so the people who are confused right uh key medicine lena hair surgery lena what will we do i mean what do we do this is the branch for you because you have a good mix of medicine and surgery very importantly, you don't see mortality and morbidity as much in other fields like medicine, surgery, oncology, cardiology, uh, even pediatrics. You see a lot of joy and happiness in your day. The amount of uh, mortality is very, very less, even morbidity for that matter. So lots of happy moments, lots of smiles, families giving you mithai every day. We get in the OPD, lots of mithai ke dabba. And so that's a good thing. Okay, and uh, very importantly, you can survive without further super specialization. That's a very important point. OBS and gynae is an end branch. If you wanted to be an end branch, it's an end branch. If you want to do further specialization, you can. There are lots, and we'll come to that further on. So it's it 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 can, you can easily survive being just a general OBS and gynae. Uh, you but you if you want, you can do infertility. You can do urogynae. You can do gynae onco. You can do fetal medicine. You can do so many things. Okay, so um, and so that, that's another pro. You can you can, both are pros. You can survive without further specialization and um, uh, the specializations. If you choose to do fetal medicine, you have a nine to two job or an eight to three job. You can fix your times. You're free. Reproductive medicine, IVF. You rarely see emergencies. Okay, so these are emergency free branches. So if you super specialize, you don't have to be busy in deliveries the whole day. You, do, you don't have to worry about a patient coming in the middle of the night in labor, right? So you are relatively free if you super specialize. So you can you can choose the way you want it to be. It's not necessary that OBG hai to na, your, your night is gone, right? And very importantly, you can, you can make a setup or you can work, you'll always need a gynecologist. I mean, in Faridabad, where I work right now, there are 300, there, there are 280 gynecologists, and it's a small town, and everybody's doing well, I feel. I mean, um, so uh, there's always work. There's, it's not like somebody sitting um, uh, in an empty uh, OPD doing nothing. It's, it's, 
it's a busy uh, field. You'll always have patients and it, it, is, it is a subject where you can practice anywhere. These are the pros, okay? But let's also look at the disadvantages. The disadvantages of this subject are the stress, okay? Till the baby is born, till the baby who deliver that baby, you're always under stress. I have a friend in the UK and she says, um, uh, the stress levels are even more. So she says she, she's probably going to die 10 years earlier because of the anxiety she has. And the anxiety is because every time a cesarean is done, they have an audit, why was a cesarean done? So why couldn't this a, a patient have delivered vaginally? So there is stress, okay? And that stress remains mostly in obstetrics, again, not in gynecology. So if you're doing obstetric practice, you'll have a lot of stress. Second is the income. So income is not as high as a super, unless you do super speciality, so, um, uh, as I said, there are a lot of gynecologists, so you can expect your income to be somewhat moderate. It Over the years, yes, it increases, but we are not earning like cardiologists, we are not earning like neurosurgeons. We are in the moderate range, so income is not very, very great, okay? Um, and as a junior, uh, there are, yes, there are long working hours, so you'll have to put in nights, so you don't, you, you don't immediately say, no, I won't do obstetrics. If you want a relatively free life, you have to go through that struggle period of five to 10 years after doing your post-graduation to reach that level when you can decide, ki, okay, now I'm going to be having, uh, be sleeping well at night and I won't have to get up in the night to make your team, to avoid uh, 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 getting up at night, to have a stress, relatively stress-free life, you have to put in some years, okay? And yes, there is a saturation. There is saturation. This again, I would say, is not um, too much because uh, uh, there are a lot of gynecologists everywhere. But yeah, I am starting to see a bit of saturation in um, uh, some areas, like for example, infertility, IVF. There's an IVF center everywhere. So some fields are getting saturated. Okay, so um, uh, that is one thing which is a disadvantage. Um, uh, also, if you decide to do a fellowship or a super speciality, if it's not from a government college, if it's from uh, some private fellowships are really expensive, they're good, but they are expensive. So uh, if you want to do super speciality, you should think about the expense also. Okay, so these are the pros and cons. Um, this is what you have to keep in mind when you take up this branch. And I, um, I, 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 I am now... Um, uh, Post my post graduation, I am now 15th year post after my post graduation, and I'm still happy. I have no regrets about taking up this subject. I think still think it's a beautiful subject. I still push my uh, anyone who asks me. I say no, please take the subject. It's a beautiful subject. You won't regret it. Yes, the first few years are difficult. Residency is difficult, but once you go beyond that, look beyond that. Think long term. It's a nice subject. Okay, so the next question, uh, Neha, I think we had was how to choose colleges, right? So um, how do we yes, choose? Yes. Yeah, so how do we choose? So this is again an, another subject, another question which I ask, uh, how to choose colleges? And the questions we ask, is it, we get asked, is it is, is government better, is private better, peripheral, mele, should we take in a big city, central institution, state institution, MD versus DNB? So I'll try to um, uh, solve this, okay? Um, uh, so a few important things that so if you have a good rank, okay, and then I don't think you need to um, uh, you worry much because you'll obviously choose the best institutes. But this is for more or less the people who are with a not very good rank, okay, and um, uh, are in a dilemma: should they choose a government college in the periphery versus a private, uh, a relatively good private college? So uh, please remember, if you go back to this slide, government versus private depends a lot on number one, your affordability. Okay, so if you feel the if your if if your family or your you are affordable and the private medical college is good, then definitely go for it. Okay, but if you're getting a government college, uh, remember the exposure, clinical exposure in a government college is usually more than a private medical college. But especially in the periphery, you don't get as good teaching faculty, okay? But again, there's so many resources available now where you can 
especially online platforms are there where you can learn okay so even if you're not affordable and you're getting a peripheral government college okay do not worry because remember learning nowadays no ever since covid online teaching has taken such a paradigm such a paradigm shift has happened that everything is available online okay and you can put in uh uh some uh you you can find a lot of stuff uh, uh available okay uh through other sources second is peripheral versus city so this again depends on your own personal choice if you're getting uh if you if you like the city life if you want to ev eventually practice in the city but there are a lot of you can also compensate for that by doing your senior residency in a good medical college so if you're not getting if you're getting post graduation in a peripheral government college you can compensate for feeling missed out by joining a, a, a senior residency in a good medical college in me say in say delhi or bangalore or mumbai all right and it's not that difficult to get initially a senior residency getting in delhi would be very difficult but now it's pretty easy to get um you know, because there's so many so many seats available okay then md versus dnb again it depends see md of course would be a preference okay but dnb in is in some colleges and some hospitals has become very very good because faculty it all depends on the faculty that is there so a few important things when you're choosing the place are number one do your research so look for a place which has a good structured academic program you can know about this by asking the seniors and meeting the people who are already pursuing the post graduation there a structured academic program should be there okay they should be interested and motivated faculty okay who are teaching who have a good pro academic program and these two points go together see the quantity of work okay so quantity of work is important because you get more and more exposure the more and more cases you see the more um, uh, you will learn of course you learn better that way language barrier is another thing which i feel is important because i did my post graduation from karnataka i am from delhi and i had to learn kannada so i think uh, uh, dr neha and all of you would be <laughs> um uh, knowing how difficult it is uh, at least for me it was very difficult but i had done my undergraduation also from karnataka so for, for me it was a little easier but i had friends who really struggled and then you you learn kannada and then suddenly a malayalam patient turns up for the exam so a malayalam speaking patient so it was a very difficult um, i felt it was it was honestly a so when i finally came to delhi to practice and i saw my first patient i was so happy that i didn't have to translate everything in my head i could talk to her very uh freely so that was one point i think you should keep it in the back of your mind maybe not a primary thing concern but definitely a concern you should have a good support group so um this will come this you may not have it initially but always find a good support group because it's a lot a residency in any subject any department is very stressful so good support group is a must and as i said dnv is equal to ms in a lot of places okay so lot of excellent um, dnv um, uh, programs are coming up and uh, even in private hospitals um, uh, so again it all depends on the faculty and very importantly many people say ki cutting milega will i get cutting will i get hands on so remember surgical hands on exposure should not be a prerequisite i have done 20 cesareans in my um, during my post graduation from kmc manipal okay and when i came uh, out to uh, delhi i had um, uh, i i felt i was very inadequately exposed because uh, i had uh, uh, senior residents with me who had done 200 or 300 cesareans but in the end i realized that it's not how that is not important what is important more important than cutting is knowing when to cut because those so those so those same colleagues would not know the basics and nobody had trained them so the faculty i i had trained under was excellent and they taught me that and uh, that when to cut when to do a cesarean and when not to do a cesarean and when to do a hysterectomy which patient is for surgery is more important skills you will learn over time okay skills is not something which you can learn in two or three years i after 15 years i am still learning a lot of skills a lot of new things robotic surgery has come up so many things are coming up so you keep learning it's a it's a long learning curve it's a huge learning curve so don't worry about surgical hands on and surgical fields 
that is a very important take home message okay it should not be a prerequisite i don't think now i i do i think i do beautiful cesareans uh, uh despite doing this 20 during my postgraduate days so it doesn't matter okay okay the um the next question do we have any uh, questions till now dr neha we can take some on now if we have any um i just check youtube chat too yeah just check and let me know you uh, so we'll go on till uh, you uh, you can check the questions and i'll move on to the strategy during residency so residency is a roller coaster ride okay and it's not only for obs and gyne it's for most medicine surgery pediatrics any branch you take ent of the even the pre clinical um i wait there's a there's a doubt okay no. so peripheral dnb or good dgo somebody is asking i would suggest a peripheral um uh this is a little tough question yeah dr jyotsh has asked so i would suggest to so dnp more or less equivalent to an md if you do dg or sometimes especially if you're interested in joining a medical college you may be at a disadvantage it all depends on what you want to do in the future if you feel you're going to do your own setup and you're not going to go into the into a, a medical college uh faculty or you're not going to join maybe the corporate setup then dgo is good enough but if you are going to study further okay uh, sorry if you're going to work in if you're thinking of working in a medical college or if you're uh, going to um, uh, looking for opportunities abroad then probably dnb is a better option because dnb is now equivalent to md okay so dgo you, after dgo you may have to um, do a secondary dnb or a md and then you will be equivalent to somebody if you are looking for a job in a medical college or the corporate setup but if you have your own if thinking of your own private setup nursing home setup or you plan to work in a small area then a uh, dgo is good enough is my suggestion okay okay so khati is asking okay khati is asking what are the disadvantages of dnb over ms for future prospects so again dr khati dnb is the same dnb and ms are the same so there's no disadvantages per se but it basically um uh, a lot depends on where you're doing your dnb from okay so as i said look do your research properly look for a place which has a good um uh, a faculty who will be your mentor and will be able to guide you well otherwise it's the same okay so there no Uh, disadvantage it just depends on where you're doing it from okay so um during your residency expect nothing okay don't go with any expectations is my advice okay because it's a roller coaster right okay one day you will be laughing one day you will be crying okay so it is like that all right then uh, uh, this is the time also when you will learn the most so make the best of this time okay so this is the time when i i still remember i probably remember every single day of my residency okay it was the best time it was also the worst time okay so everything you learn during those 3 years is going to be the most important okay everything you see around you is a learning experience if you see the nurse talking to a patient you see somebody putting in a foley's catheter you read the name of a drug for the first time everything you see how is an instrument cleaned after you've used a speculum in the opd you probably just put it in the in the bin or in the tray and you forget about it how is that speculum sterilized next day when you come back it's nicely autoclaved how did that happen so everything you see around you is a learning experience it is very important to learn from these small small things okay expect long hours expect less breaks ex expect a lot of stress mental and physical okay stress of studying stress of thesis but there's also that joy of your first delivery of your first cesarean of your first surgery of your first face to face counseling so everything is 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 a moment to uh, to remember i still remember my first delivery i still remember the first time i i actually sutured an episiotomy so all these things are things which you will never forget okay and there are lots of places to learn okay so apart from your um uh, the teaching program which will be in your college you have your books you have uh, uh, online sessions like my youtube channel okay then you have journals you have the library you have the internet there's a lot of places okay the most important part where you will learn is from your patients okay your patients are going to be your teachers for the next 3 years never ever forget that so always respect them always treat your patients with respect 
you learn from the OT, you learn from just even if you're not assisting, okay, even if you're not scrubbed for that case, every single thing is a learning experience, right? So a lot of things you get to learn from, okay? And learning has basically three components. You have knowledge, you have skills, and you have attitude. Knowledge, though, you can pick up from your books, your uh, uh, online sources, okay? Skills comes from assisting cases, doing cases. And as I said, it's a long learning curve. Some people pick up very well. Some people take time, okay? So it's something which get, comes with experience, okay? You can't learn it in two to three years. It takes many many years okay and very importantly in a very neglected aspect of the subject is attitude what is your attitude towards your patient towards your colleagues towards your seniors towards your juniors how do you interact with them how do you talk to them i would put attitude as number one okay when it comes to practice because um, uh, being in the private practice i realize that it's very important um uh Patients are happiest. You may call somebody else to do your surgery. You may not be very good at skills, but you have to build that connect with the patient, that rapport with the patient, and that is what will build that relationship with you and your patient. So learning that from the first year itself in residency is very, very important. Okay. So being a resident means being a clinician, being a team player, being a leader, being a communicator being a professional and being a lifelong learner, okay? So these are some points and some tips during residency for those who are going to be entering residency or those who are already doing residency, okay? Remember these tips. Make a timetable for the month. After you get a month, you know which way you will be posted for that month, make a timetable, okay? Make a daily schedule, a to-do list, try to complete it. Okay, learn from your seniors, colleagues, juniors, nurses, everybody you can learn something from. Make a logbook. This is your own personal logbook, not the college required one. And write down what you see every day. I made a logbook. I remember I would write down every interesting case I saw that day. I would come back home five minutes or 10 minutes it takes. Just write down the interesting cases that you saw and one small line about what you learned from it. Okay, and this you can start doing from your internship. Okay, you don't have to start those who are still preparing. And there's always something to learn from your daily routine. Okay, dress up every day. Why do I, why have written this? Because stress, your stress can, can really uh, uh, pull you down. So just spend some time on yourself. Five to 10 minutes every day, dress up for your workplace, for residency. Okay, make it a very important part of your routine is one small suggestion I would give. Jitni bhi daan khani hai, whatever amount of um, uh, scolding you'll get from your seniors doesn't matter. This is part of residency. Keep smiling and appreciate the little, little things. Okay, so as I said, don't worry about surgical chances of cutting. You will get there eventually, but still assist as much as possible. The more you assist, the more you learn. Your skills improve simply by assisting also. Okay, so don't worry about cutting. Worry about knowing when to cut or what surgery to do. That's more important than knowing the skill. Okay. Okay, so just a few points. What did I do? I learned from my mistakes. Okay, documentation is very important. Um, my method of study was, number one, I would have a group. We would have a group of two or three of us PGs and we would study together. And my method of studying was to, for example, if I'm studying preeclampsia or hypertension pregnancy, I would create a booklet. I would take the all the study material. Williams, it's given well. Gabby, it's given well. Three, four books where it's given well, one topic. So I would just Xerox all those or take printouts of all those places where it's given well, the RCOG guidelines, ACOG guidelines, and make a folder. And that folder is labeled preeclampsia. I do that for every single topic in OBS and Gynae. So as a result, I had 50 small booklets. Okay, instead of the books, opening it every time, if I had to read about diabetes and pregnancy, or if I had to read about ovarian malignancies, I just pick up my booklet. Every information from every possible source would be in that. So do that from your first year itself. Okay, it makes life so much simpler by the time you reach final year. This was a big hit with my with my colleagues and my juniors. Everybody took those booklets and made their own. And I still have those. So I know where and anything you learn extra, 
you see a patient, you learn something extra, you note it down in that booklet. So I would attach a few empty pages in the beginning of every booklet where I would make my own notes. Okay, so that's a very good way to study. Okay, and it helps you very, it, it helps a lot in the exam where you just quickly pick, pick up that book and study that topic. Okay. Okay, so don't get jealous why I put this. You'll see um, our friends or colleagues or people in different medical colleges, your friends who've gone to some other medical colleges doing something better or something different, or maybe they do their, they do, as I said, 20 cesareans, you've just done one. So don't matter, doesn't matter. Don't get jealous. Whatever you're learning, okay, is yours. Okay, nobody can take that away from you. Also find time for yourself. Even it's five to 10 minutes per day, okay? Find time for yourself and for people who support you. That's very important. Okay. Now, um, a few points about uh, this is another query that uh, um, what after? What after post graduation? What next? What do we do next? Okay. So, do we do senior residency or do we do super specialization? So, this again depends on if you feel you have not learned enough during your post graduation, if you feel your exposure was less from wherever you did it. You can join senior residency to get that confidence in picking up where you didn't get enough cesareans or you feel you're not, um, um, you need some more exposure. You can join senior residency and most places would, and join a place which has good exposure, okay? If you feel that was lacking. But if you feel ki mujhe general obstetrics karna hi nahi, I just want to do IVF, I just want to do urogyne, I just want to do oncology, I just want to do fetal medicine, then there's no point doing senior residency or maybe just six months you could do just to have a general grasp of the subject and study for your fellowship, okay? So they are, there is super specialization in reproductive medicine, gynae endoscopy, fetal medicine, high-risk pregnancy, critical care, gynae onco, uro gynae, what I do, medical education, okay? That's why I put a smiley face. This is my super specialization, okay? Then there's even you can go into healthcare management, health management, or you can do both. There are many of uh, my colleagues, my juniors who've done senior residency, then they've gone into fellowship. But if you're very sure ki mujhe sirf IVF karna, I don't want to do anything else, then you can skip the part of senior residency, okay? Or you can prepare for your fellowship exams when doing your senior residency. After that, then what? This is another question. I had an Insta Live session on a similar topic yesterday. Ki what to do after, uh, after uh, my specialization or my fellowship? What should I do then? Okay, so you have many uh, many you can you can do you can have your own private nursing home okay it requires a bit of an investment but yes it usually most gynecologists are doing well in a private nursing home you can join a corporate setup like where i am where i have a nine to five job i have a team under me okay i do general ops and gynae but yes i have a team who can manage uh, so we have divided duties so i'm busy three nights a week three nights a week i'm free so you can have such sort of a setup you can do freelancing, okay? Uh, you can go abroad. There are a lot of opportunities abroad. Although surgical branches in the US are limited, but otherwise you can go abroad, okay? Um, you can work in a medical college. That's a very good idea. If you are very into academics, um, you want to have a nine to four job, but you're not so concerned about the money, then a medical college is good. If you want to uh, work in a rural setup, you can go to a government, you, even in, in, in uh, the urban setup, a government centers are there if you want to give back to society. Nine to two, nine to three job, a government center is also a good option. So you have many options available as a gynecologist. Okay. And um, the last uh, a query, which I think is very, very important is um, as, a, as a male, sorry, as a male, as a as a man, as a guy, uh, uh, and this I have got so many queries on this. And I'm very very happy to see that many guys want to take up gynecology as a branch. Uh, so I think it's um, it's all about following your heart. If you feel this is this is for you, this is your this is meant for you, then go ahead and take it. Yes, you will find some problems, especially in some areas of our country, uh, uh, the northern parts, especially because I work in the south, I work in the north. Um, the south, <clears throat> there is no discrimination. I felt at all in both Kerala and Karnataka I worked. I feel there is no discrimination at all. 
male gyne uh, from the patient side the patients do not discriminate against male gynecologists they are very um, uh, 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 nice but um, uh, in the uh, in the north in um, uh, where i'm currently working in haryana in punjab in uh, up in bihar also like you you'll have a lot of apprehension women will not be very forthcoming uh, especially for obstetrics um, in showing um, male gynecologists so you may find a bit of uh, uh, a problem there but i feel you should not take it too seriously it all depends on how you counsel your patient okay and how comfortable you make her feel that is important okay and uh, also if you still feel uh, it, it's a problem it's mostly a problem in obstetrics you can always choose to do gynecology or sub specialize and decide um, your field accordingly but still i would say it's a beautiful branch don't let gender um, uh, uh, disallow you from um, uh, joining this beautiful field okay and just to end a little bit about myself this is the timeline of um, my um, journey so mbbs 2000 did my post graduation 2009 i worked in nepal also mangalore also um lady harding also and i got then i gave my fellowship exam uh in reproductive medicine i got selected but i also was planning my baby so i baby number one took preference over my fellowship so i didn't do my fellowship and i joined um esi medical college in faridabad and i had my baby number two so with women yes so work-life balance is very important with women you tend to um compromise uh, for your family or the primary caregiver uh, this does happen uh, i won't lie i was i am i was and i still am very very ambitious okay but yes uh, i had to sacrifice my fellowship for my family and uh, uh, i don't regret it uh, but yeah it does and you do face some setbacks setbacks in life but then what is life without uh, setbacks right so then in 2020, 21 and COVID started, I started exploring new options in teaching and that's where I am right now. So now I am in the corporate sector, plus I'm a faculty, plus I'm continuing my passion of writing. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, Dr. Nia, can we have any questions? Are there? Uh, yes, ma'am. There's one question on yeah, yeah. Uh, both you. Um, Dr. Samina is asking, uh, what about DNB and diploma OBG? What is the passing percentage? DNB. So DNB passing percentage, men, so I have been a DNB examiner myself uh, till last year. I was a DNB examiner. I have checked papers and I have taken exams. I've gone as a national board examiner. Uh, uh, and I feel the quality of uh, uh, the, the, the students were, were very good, were brilliant. We didn't fail anybody in the batch. I took the exam. We actually didn't fail anybody. So I think it's a misconception. As I said, it depends on where you've done your DNB from. If you've got good guidance, if you've got good um, mentors, if you've studied well, uh, the DNB pass percentage is as good as an MD. This this thought which you're saying was many, many years back. But now the DNB, the, the um, uh, assessment of DNB has changed over the years. And it's a very uniform assessment. It's a very objectively structured exam. You have OSCEs. You have um, everything is, uh, uh, we just have a checklist. We just have to mark. So even when we check your theory answers, it's very, very objective. Okay, so it's very difficult to fail the exam. And I'm speaking very honestly because I have been an examiner. It's very difficult to fail the exam. If you've studied well, the pass percentage is actually quite good now. All right, so don't worry about the pass percentage. If you've studied well, you will pass definitely. Okay, 